the reason I was able to be successful in my career in recruiting communists was they had been, they felt betrayed. This is Christina Goodrich, and I am speaking with my father, Austin Goodrich, who has a very proud career with the Central Intelligence Agency as a case officer. We were discussing how that all began. Well, I went down to Washington with my family, actually to witness the signing of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. I'd asked my uh, political science instructor if they might uh, be hiring in Washington. He said, well, he heard they were hiring over at the CIA, a, a brand new agency and that I might look up their number in the directory and give them a call, which I did. <laughs> they encouraged me to come to their office, an old World War I temporary building, uh, just a few hundred feet from the Lincoln Memorial. I showed up there and uh, had an interview. They asked me if I could come back the next day for a second interview. And I said, well, I'd have to ask my dad because we weren't really planning on staying another day. But my dad, when he realized that this was uh, a matter of getting me off his back and getting in gainful employment, was only too happy to say yes, he'd be happy to stay another day. It uh, One day I got a call about three months after I had been in Washington. They asked me if I could come down. I might have a job. So I showed up for the interview in the Stadler Hotel precisely one hour late. <laughs> I thought I was right on time, but of course I was working on the railroad time, which was an hour off from this time being used by the clocks there. Anyway, this didn't seem to bother them. And... Uh, I proceeded to have an interview and was invited to then go home and sit tight and wait for a telephone call. It was a career that lasted 25 years under official cover and uh, another 15 years on contract. I was under deep cover. Uh, because uh, they, they thought at that time they were trying to get some deep cover people in place. I had uh, worked a little in Sweden. I, I had the language. So what they did was they sent me to Oslo, which was not my target country, but it was close enough. And then they just said, goodbye, good luck. Work your way into a job in Stockholm and uh, take it from there. But that takes that takes a certain strength and courage. Well, I was given a slip of paper with a telephone number on it, <laughs> and I was told, "If you're really in trouble, call that number. <laughs> Otherwise, we've got your bank account, and we'll put your salary in there and." You go out there and develop your own cover. Now they try to to get these covers all very tailor-made and uh, worked out in detail, and it doesn't work nearly as well. And so it went from there. I, I, I love doing uh, work on shortwave radio and spot jobs like this this job with CBS, uh, mainly just on a pay-as-you-go basis. Mm -hmm. And I'd get, they'd give me a sum of money, and I was happy to cash those checks. At one point, when I came home, a finance officer came to me and said, you have to pay all that money back that you got for cover jobs. I said, I'd love to do so, but I don't have any of it. Anyway, I had a branch chief who came to my defense, and he chased this guy out of the room and just said, this son of a bitch, don't ever come back here and ask for money that my, my man here has earned in a cover job. 
Later they did enforce that, and you had to pay back money, and I tell you, that was the end of non-official cover. It would be, because then you're working, I mean, you're working two jobs. You're, yeah. cover, you're doing your cover job, right? and then you're doing the undercover work that you're supposed to be, work, that they're paying you for. So what they're asking for is a 16-hour day. Exactly. And so uh, they weren't going to get it. <laughs> I'd already spent it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you were in a, you were in a movie at one point in stuff. That was one of those little cover jobs, and I found that the best way of cover was to have what I call lateral diversification. You picked up whatever you could get, so that if anybody at one time said. Well, why weren't you at that press conference? Well, I was working on a movie. Why weren't you at the movie? I was at a press conference. You know, lateral diversification. And I created it all by myself. In Finland, you published two books. I had a contract with uh, Strauss, Freder, and Cudahy in those days. Uh, to do a book on Finland. I remember once uh, the branch chief at home had sent a message out to the chief of station doubting that I was really going to do a book. So what I did, I guess this is sort of typical of my mentality, was I went into my office, disconnected the telephone, sat down with a bunch of books from the library and wrote a book, That's Study in Sisu. You know, I've read that book. This was 20 years after you published it, and it was still on the reading list. And my teacher, he said, oh, that's your father? That's a wonderful book. <laughs> well, I did receive the Finlandia Association Award for this uh, book. Well, and then you did also a book that another professor of mine lauded, um, and that was Helsinki a la carte. Oh, Can you tell yes. tell me a little bit about that one? <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun doing. Uh, we sent out our food patrols to various restaurants, members of the Western Foreign Press Club, and... Uh, for a free meal, we gave them a write-up. <laughs> but actually, quite objective write-ups. Uh, we weren't always uh, terribly uh, positive in our reviews. It sold very well, and uh, we received a lot of credit for this. And it was it was a labor of love. The uh, the the revenue from the books went. Uh, to pay scholarship to uh, Finnish journalism students. Oh. oh, that's impressive. Yeah, it was a lot of fun and good for the soul. Yeah. From the Finland, we moved to Holland. Well, a wonderful country it was. And uh, I think one of the best countries in the world to raise children. <laughs> and And that's what was a, a real priority mission of mine in those days. Uh, you went to the American school in The Hague. Yeah. Of course, Holland was just a wonderful family country. It was so family-oriented. I guess they had about the highest birth rates in the world because of the competition for votes between the Christian parties and the Socialist parties. Is that right? Basically, right. So the more kids you could have, the more votes you could get and uh, stay in power. But so in Thailand, we were there 66, 67, 68. Those were right. really key years. At this point, you were chief of station, I think. What do you feel the role was that you played in, in advancing the American cause the, uh, for democracy and freedom there? I feel that I had some, some effect in that uh, my specialty was recruiting to our service disillusioned 
and unhappy members of the Communist Party. People who were very well strongly motivated to noble purposes which they felt had been betrayed by the party apparatus. Did you ever have to use blackmail? No, I didn't. I didn't work that way, actually. Uh, I felt in every case that I was doing a service to these gentlemen, and they were certainly provided a very useful intelligence uh, service to the United States government. Mm -hmm. How important do you feel the human element is in intelligence gathering and its quality? I think it's absolutely uh, paramount, uh, absolutely paramount. And the reason I was able to be successful in my career in recruiting communists was they had been, they felt betrayed in a cause that they had dedicated very often at great uh, personal sacrifice. Uh-huh. And that's why I think we won the Cold War. Not that we were that much better, but because the people who came into control of the communist movement ultimately were corrupted by this and the power prerogatives that went with with service in that party. I, I succeeded in letting these people uh, feel that they would better serve their their real cause by cooperating with us than by mm-hmm. uh, cooperating the people who have abused their faith. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate this time. This was very interesting. Appreciate thank you, it. my beloved daughter. <laughs>